I grabbed this used RX 6800 XT on the local marketplace for $200. $200, you exclaim. Yes. And while it looked nearly perfect from the outside, it needed some refreshing. That meant that the $200 price wasn't really what I paid for the card. The box proudly wears the sticker of Stock X, which was a notorious outlet for scalped cards at the height of the mining pandemic. So, the card is about four years old. It had some grime on the PCI Express slot, but otherwise, it looked clean. You've actually seen this card already in the Thermaltake Tower 600 Chill Thoughts video, and I already passed the card along to someone else who's been enjoying the card for a few months. So, that's a spoiler, I guess, but whatever. But this video isn't actually about buying and selling. It's about refurbishing a card. See, when I got the card and I put it in that case, it hit a 110 degree hotspot temperature during a Fermark run, and this was in sweater weather. Even power limited, it still hit 107 degrees Celsius in that case. Now, the original owner didn't tell me about any issues with the card, even when pressed. In my experience, most people just want to play games, and they couldn't even tell if there was an issue that didn't break their whole PC. A significant number of sellers will also hide information from you too. It's the reality of buying used parts, and if you go into a purchase expecting that sort of thing, you can make it work for you. I can only guess if the seller knew that the card ran hot, but honestly I doubt it. It could also have been the Thermaltake Tower 600's fault, and I don't have the ability to science that to death anymore, but I did some follow-up testing on the card right after I saw those high temperatures. On an open bench, in 19.7 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, Fermark pushed it to a 95 degrees Celsius hotspot temperature at about 1050 RPM fan speed. The GPU ran at a roughly sustained clock of 1870 MHz. In Fermark, you often see lower frequencies than in gaming, just as a note. Anonymous internet know-it-alls disagreed whether that temperature was fine or dangerous. At that point, it wasn't clear that the card actually had an issue, but for the sake of the person I was going to hand this off to, and for my own peace of mind about that, and for this video, it seemed right to open up the card and refresh the cooling. While reading about the temperatures other people experienced, I also noticed that users of this particular card were having trouble with thermal paste pump out. Pump out occurs when the regular forces at play in a card squeeze the paste out from where it belongs. Gaps form between the cooling components, and the paste can't transfer heat as effectively to the heatsink from the GPU as it could if it properly filled that space. The pump out effect doesn't usually produce catastrophic temperature increases, but it is noticeable. This card did not experience pump out though. AMD used a graphene sheet for a thermal interface on the 6800 XT, which is dry and immune from pump out. It's a great solution to avoid maintenance long term. No, these people instead were having trouble with the repaste job they did after removing the sheet. Some people recommended extra viscous thermal paste, like this Thermaltake TFX, but a huge amount of people also recommended a wonderful thermal interface material called PTM7950 that comes in a sheet form. PTM7950 is a material that goes from a solid-ish state to a liquid gel state as it heats up. It's about as effective as some of the best thermal pastes at moving heat. It's not electrically conductive, and it also resists pump out. In the end, I chose that. Now, if you're going to open up your GPU to replace the thermal interface there, you'll probably want to have replacement thermal pads ready. It's very easy to damage thermal pads, and in case they're in bad shape anyway, this is a great time to replace them. After all, you wouldn't want to mess up your PTM7950 application and pull out all those almost 40 screws again just to do thermal pads. Tweezers were very helpful in putting this stuff on the GPU, and so was measuring it to the exact right size for the GPU. You don't want to have too much overhang or not enough so that the GPU isn't covered. Once it's on and the card is all closed up, it takes several cycles of heating and cooling for the PTM7950 to reach its maximum effectiveness. I guess it needs to liquefy and flow a little bit to fill in all the microscopic gaps between the GPU and the heatsink. After a few days, I retested the Fermark benchmark. The ambient temperature was about 5 degrees Celsius hotter, but the card performed about the same. That's good news. Likely, that meant that the PTM7950 is actually slightly more effective than the original graphene pad, and at that point, I felt confident handing the card off. 
The current user hasn't given me any complaints about it either. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was interesting for you, and Merry Christmas.